Good morning. So, as you just saw, it is a little bit before 5 on Monday, January 31st, 2000 and 2022, the year of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why am I up so early? It's my last day of freedom. Uh, basically, I have had the past three months of having the illusion of being <laughs> a full-time artist because I've been out of a job from October, end of October, so basically November, until now. But I found a job and it's back into the workforce I go starting tomorrow, uh, which means things are gonna change. So why do I bring that up? Well, because this is what happens when you aren't a full-time artist and you have a job and you have to practice. And I just wanted to be real about that because I don't know, I'm a little nervous about it. So in my previous video, I just responded to a bunch of hate I got on 4chan about being a forever beginner and not improving and how embarrassing that is despite trying so hard for five years and what have you. You know, because of that, like that's fresh, like that was yesterday for me at the time of this recording. And you know, to be seeing the change in how my life is structured, it makes me worry if I'll fall back into old habits because for me personally in my own life with what's going on for me right now, I have to do this and wake up at this time at, where are we at now? How long have I been recording? Five minutes. So I have to wake up at this godforsaken hour in order if I actually want to improve, which is stressful to me because that's difficult. Not everybody has to do this, I guess. You know, you don't have to wake up at 4.30 and draw in the morning. You don't have to do that. You'll burn yourself out. Don't be so crazy about this. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Pace yourself. And it's like, I get that. I agree with you, but I don't have any other choice. I have a full-time demanding job from nine to five. So that right there is cut out. If it's in person, which it might be, I need about 30 minutes to an hour of commute, which means I need to leave the house by around eight o'clock. If I'm at home, that can be used for drawing instead. So here's hoping it can be remote. But then on top of that, when I get home at five, I am married, so I have a significant other that I need to give attention to. And I also have a human being. I have a child on the way that will soon be in the world. And for me and my priorities with life, I really want to prioritize being a present father and being there for my little child, my little spawn. And that means when I get home from five o'clock onwards, I need to prioritize being with my family. Then after that, after dinner, after whatever, after you spend some quality family time, then you can either stay up and do your work and chase your dreams or and, you know, grind, or you can relax and play video games, or you can, you know, hop on Discord with your friends, or, you know, go to bed and get more sleep, or you can work out or whatever else. So it's like, if you have work, then you have family time, and that takes up pretty much realistically nine to like, eight and if they're on a commute you can say eight to eight that's 12 hours of your day when else are you gonna fit in the time for the rest of life so for me personally i know that i'm not a night owl i'm a, like i can't stay up past like 11 o'clock even when i was younger i was like oh we're gonna stay up all night and play video games oh, i would fall asleep by 1 a.m so my routine is essentially wake up at 4 30 go to the gym for an hour because I'm getting fat, I'm getting old, my metabolism is, isn't what it used to be, and if I drink any alcohol, I instantly gain like a pound and a half, so I don't have youth on my side anymore. And then getting back home from the gym at 6.30, I can practice art for around an hour and a half if I have to commute from 6.30 to 8, or for two to three hours if I can do it right up until nine when I start working, so from like 6.30, to 8.30, 8.45 before clocking in at nine, which gives me two hours of art practice a day, five days a week, which gives me then 10 hours of art. Uh, if you do it on Saturday and Sunday, you can, but again, work-life balance, taking time to rest, spending time with friends, doing things like out outside of art, or even, you know, heaven forbid, if you want to make a YouTube video, you have to account for the editing and the recording time of that content that's different from the 10 hours of actually grinding. And I say all that, and on one hand, you're like, oh my gosh, wow, that's, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel so good about myself. I'm gonna be so productive. That's so great. On the other hand, that's a kind of crazy lifestyle. And I'm a little nervous if I'll be able to do that. So this morning, uh, my body naturally woke itself up at 4.20 which was a good sign because that means I went to bed early enough and my body seemed to get enough energy it needed. I was like, well, I can go to the gym because I'm up or I can stay and draw because it's my last day. I sat there and I'm like, I'm gonna have this struggle every day for the rest of my life. All it's gonna take for me to not improve at art is just roll back over at 4.30 in the morning or the equivalent. All it's gonna take for me to improve at art is after a full day at work, after dinner, after being with the baby or whatever else, that is assuming, you know, after you sleep, you know, once the baby's old enough to actually let you sleep through the night, then you're gonna have to be like, all right, time to go 
you know, draw my circles or do my drills or study form at freaking, you know, eight o'clock after your entire day has been through. So I decided to take today my, my last day of freedom, because again, work starts tomorrow, and just finish the couple of YouTube videos that I have in the pipeline already in production that I, you know, that I already started to record and edit. I don't know. The 4chan thing was on my mind, and I was like, well, I mean, I might as well make a video explaining the danger of how I could l continue to live up to that stereotype and critique and what it's going to take for me personally to overcome that critique and that stereotype and that weakness that I've had for the past however many years. Because for me, for my path, I prioritized getting out of the restaurant industry over getting good at art as fast as I possibly could. Um, and at the beginning, those two goals were linked. I thought that I could get out of the restaurant industry by getting really good at art. But art was too long of a marathon for me to try to sprint, especially as a total beginner. So I had to pivot, um, which then led me to doing art less. So it's kind of this trade off. It's like, yeah, on one hand, I went from Olive Garden to fine dining to Oculus to Roblox at the cost of my art not really improving that much. It's this trade-off, and do I regret it? No, because having more money and better structure and work-life balance that being able to have grown in my career has given me to be able to, you know, to support a family, which I couldn't really do before as the primary income as a bartender and server at Olive Garden. So it's like, no, I wouldn't change anything, but it brings its own set of problems with it now where it's like, okay, hey, remember that art thing you're really trying to do and really trying to get good at? It's like, now you're going to have to squeeze it in in this way. And the temptation to not squeeze it in is going to be really high because I'll be perfectly honest, when I was at Oculus, I didn't improve that much. Why didn't I improve? Because it's really easy to get complacent. It's really easy to just show up, do the job that you like and the industry that you care about with the structure that you have, with the money that you earn, and just chill, man. Play video games, go on a vacation, hang out with your wife, sleep in, like life is good. You got this good job, you're, you're in the stability, and yeah, art smart, get better whenever, practice for fun, it's all about the, you know, and you just kind of like lose this drive and ambition, you just kind of coast. So seeing that I'm about to start another job that's I'm looking forward to, that I'm going to enjoy, which in and of itself is something to be thankful for. I don't mean to make that sound like a burden or like complaining about privilege, but it's just like, it means that it's going to take a lot more discipline and intentionality to actually improve at my art. And I'm recognizing that and I'm intimidated by it. And naturally this problem would go away if I wasn't so, again, afraid of art. Like if art was a hobby or something I enjoyed doing, I don't think I would view it as such of a stress or a burden of like, oh, I have to improve in practice. And it's a fine line because yeah, like even if you do enjoy art, there is that discipline side of it where you should like drill your fundamentals or, you know, try to get outside your comfort zone instead of just like doodling for fun. So I recognize that there's a mix of like needing to be disciplined to improve your art, but also needing to enjoy the process of creating it as well. And so even though I might be scared of this new schedule of this reality of my life that I've chosen that I'm more or less okay with, I realize that it'll be easier for me and the schedule will feel less like a burden if I'm looking forward to creating and take the pressure off of having to improve and view it as like, oh boy, I'm excited I get to draw art this morning before work compared to, man, I have to wake up and practice before work or else I'll never get good. Like one is much more focused on getting good and one is much more focused on just enjoying art for the sake of it. And I'm a little imbalanced right now. And even though it's frustrating because I wish that just recognizing that would be enough to switch it over and have me be able to enjoy it more but I still have that fear of failure and sucking and like that's still something I'm actively working through. But hopefully in 2022, I can kind of shift that back towards just enjoying the process of creating itself. All right, how long was that? Oh, nice, record time. I only took like 20 minutes to record. Time to trim it down to like half the length. And as an aside for everybody who left me a comment um, on the 4chan video, I, you guys really made a difference. Um, you really encouraged me. I, I can see the demographics for my for my channel, and it's mostly guys aged 18 to 24. And if you know any guys aged 18 to 24, how do they express their emotions? Uh, they don't, typically. Um, so a lot of the content that I make, I don't get a whole lot of encouragement or affirmation or feedback. There's a couple people who comment, I see you, I appreciate you. But I haven't had that type of outpouring of support or hearing those kinds of stories on my channel, arguably ever. Um, 
So seeing all of your guys' comments yesterday for me at the time of this recording uh, was, I was really emotional. Um, yesterday was a really emotional roller coaster to me, for me. Which I guess, which, you know, that's kind of why I decided to make this video today. It's almost like a follow-up to that. So anyway, regardless, thank you. I mean, it really means a lot. I'll stop rambling. <laughs> but, all right, hey, tomorrow, for me, it's big day. I don't know what it is for you. <laughs> but we'll do it together. All right, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Those are my thoughts. See you next time.